Jesus Christ. Hello. Yes. What's the meaning of the word baptized? Baptized means you were grafted in, you were in union with, you were united with Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Now with your senses, can you make out that you are in union and grafted with Christ? No. No. But the Bible says so. So what's my job now? Hello, what's my job now? My job is to renew my mind, change my thinking and, and believe that when Jesus walked, I was in Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Do we all believe that we were in Adam? Come on. The whole human race was in Adam, right? Come on, yes or no? So when Adam sinned, that sin had an effect on the whole human race and every child was born made sinner. Agree? Yes. Now, in the same way he's saying, when Jesus walked on this planet Earth, we were all baptized in Christ Jesus. In other words, we were in Jesus. How many of you believe that? Okay. Now, let, let me ask you a question. Praise God. How many of you have ever been to Jerusalem? That means you did not believe that you were in Jesus. Hello? Hello? You know, when I read that and I said, Jesus, you mean to say I was baptized in Jesus, that means I already been to the Holy Land. How? When Jesus was born in Israel, I was in him. I was in Israel. Now with my senses, can I say, I've been to the Holy Land? No. But by faith in this scripture, can I say, yes, I've been to the Holy Land. So he said we were baptized into Jesus and then he says we were baptized into his death. So when Jesus was crucified on the cross, you can sit up here. The last shall be the first. How true the scriptures are. <laughs> the scriptures are so true, praise God. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was crucified, was I crucified with Jesus? Yes. Come on. Yes. But the question is, do I believe that? Do I believe that? Then he says, therefore, we are, we are. So when Jesus was put in the tomb, were you in the tomb along with Jesus? According to the scripture. Yes. Now what is your senses saying? No, no, no. And what is your faith saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why the Bible says, the just shall live by and not by senses. Because senses can make you understand only natural things. Your faith can make you understand spiritual things. Things that cannot be understood by your senses. So we were buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in the newness of God. Now, newness of life. No, 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 no. Jesus came on this planet Earth on a mission or did he come to get married and have some children? He was on a mission. What mission? To fulfill his father's will. To fulfill his father's will. Praise God. And we, as Christians, the followers of Christ, are also on a mission. Really? Yes. Ask your neighbor, look at your neighbor's eye and ask, really? Really? Please look at 
with your neighbors eye and ask, really? What is your neighbor doing? <laughs> Laughing. <laughs> Praise God. Now, did God raise Jesus from the dead? Yes. yes. Now, when Jesus died, he died that death by faith. By faith in what? In his father. Believing that he had fulfilled the will and the plan of his father. And that's why he said it is finished. And then when he said it is finished, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Praise God. Now he's dead. He's dead. Can a dead body have any power to rise up? No. So God has to put his, his power into the dead body and raise up Jesus. Agree? Yes. Now, supposing, supposing you are my master and I am your slave. Okay? Now because I am your slave, can you make me work day and night? Yes. I'm talking about slave, slave. Can, Not can. this workers working in the office. I'm saying a slave. A slave. Please understand the word slave. So can the master come and kick and say, get out? Because a slave would be treated worse than an animal. So whenever the master wants, he can make me work. All that he wants, he can get the things done by me. Come on, talk to me, please. Yes, yes, yes. So one morning the boss comes, you come and you kick me and say, get out! And I don't get up. You go and kick me and I don't even move. You turn me around and I don't move. And then you realize that I'm dead. The moment you realize that I'm dead, can you make me work now? Come on, can you make me work now? So the moment I died, the master lost his ownership of me. So my death means my freedom from the master. Yes. All of you agree? Yes. That's exactly what God is saying. The old master who Adam had sold the whole human race to the master called Satan, the moment Jesus took our place and died, our death on the cross, we all died with him and Satan lost his ownership over us forever. Are you now understanding? Yes. And then the father put his power into Jesus and raised him from the dead. At that very moment, you and I are raised up in Christ Jesus. And now we are no longer born from a mother's womb. We were born from a mother's womb and we died to our old self on the cross. And now we are born from the womb of the Heavenly Father. And that's why we are born again. But this time when we are born again, we are no longer born with the nature of sin in us. Now we are born in Christ Jesus and therefore we are born with the nature of God in us. That's why he says, know you not. If you don't know this, then sin will have dominion over you. I've got this mobile. Why does a person have mobile? What's the purpose of a mobile? Communication. To communicate. Right? Now, I did not know this. We have got a control room in Goa where 24 hours the Come channel is going on, broadcasting. So, in the past, when something would go wrong, then the person has to go to the control room and see and set things right. So the technician said, brother, you don't need to go there. You can be in any part of the world and use your mobile 
and have a control in the control room from wherever you are, all you need is an internet connection. Now I did not know this application is available. And as long as I did not know, I would have to run to Goa and open and then see and get things done. But now that I know this application, I can be in any corner on the internet and control, have control over there. So as long as I did not know, could I use the facility? In the same way, what God has done for you and the, and the power that he has installed in you, unless you know it, will you be able to use it? So when the prodigal son came back, he not only washed him and forgave his sin, but much more than that, he gave him the robe of righteousness, and that robe of righteousness is the nature of God that he pulled in him, so that now with this new nature, the son will never be drawn towards the worldly things, now he will be drawn to the kingdom of God, and that same son was once upon a time being used by the devil to do his dirty works is now in the kingdom of his father doing the works of God just like Jesus came to fulfill the will of the father now you and I, the children born again with the nature of God and with the grace of God and with the power of God and with the authority of God can go around doing the same work that Jesus It's not only about forgiveness of sin. That is one part. But now it is. You having dominion over sin. You having dominion over the works of the devil. And destroying his kingdom. That's the good news. When the prodigal son came back. He gave him the authority ring. Saying what son? The very devil who had made you a slave. Now under my authority. You can go and mess up his life. That's what you saw in the Christian. The man who was a slave in sexual sin opens a ministry for those who are caught up with sexual sin and deliver them using the power of God. Broken people, broken hearts are champions in mending broken hearts. Because once upon a time, when you experience that you are broken and God sent somebody and preached to you the gospel and showed you the power and showed you the truth and the truth set you free now day and night you want to go around and tell everybody hey this is the truth that set me free hey all this time I was trying with my hard work to get out of sin but now I don't need to do it with my hard work all I need is to renew my mind on the word of God. That word of God is the sword of the spirit that will fix up that sin out of my life. Are you following? Yes. Put that Titus. Okay, okay, just, just let's go down. Let's go down. Go, go, go. Five and six. Is it okay? I'm troubling you. Huh? Yeah, let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Five. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also... So what kind of life are we supposed to live now? Come on, what kind of life are we supposed to live now? A life of resurrection. A life of resurrection where your mind is all the time focused on his work. Do you know why we fail most of the time? We fail most of the time because of no commitment. When you are in commitment to God and His Word, your life is no longer governed by mood. Have you heard that word mood? Have you heard any time people say, I'm in good mood and I'm in bad mood? When a person is in bad mood, how do you think that person will act? That person will all the time act according to the word of God when he's in a bad mood. 
so a person who is living a resurrected life his life is no longer governed by senses people whose lives are governed by their senses will make wrong choices and make decisions that will cost their future but a person having the resurrected life having the resurrected power in him will make a commitment whether I feel good or not, I will love. Has, did Jesus say this, brother? Love your enemies when you feel good. No, no, he said that. <laughs> love your enemies when you feel good. When you are in good mood, love your enemies. Or did he command, love your enemies in any mood? How is our, our, our way of loving? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the person will say, brother, if that is what God is saying, then how can I love when my feelings are not right? My friend, how did God love us when we were good or when we were yet sinners? So we were his enemies? When we were sinners, yes, yes. So what kind of feelings must have come to him, good or bad? Bad. But yet, was he committed? Was he committed to love us? Yes. yes. And because of that commitment to love us, did he achieve the result? Yes. So God is showing us, how do you get result? Now for example, the testimony that you heard just now, Supposing the lady would have gone on an emotion, she left the husband and she went to praise God. And now she keeps on telling herself, this husband has done this to me and I'm not going to forgive him and all that. Do you think there would have been a future? No. But she makes a decision. What decision? Commitment. Lord, you have forgiven me this much. And you are asking me to forgive my husband this much. So I made a choice to forgive him. What changed their marriage? What brought unity in their marriage? Forgiveness. Only forgiveness? There's something more. Hey, there's something more. You know, huh? She never bought the past. That was after a lot of years, okay? But what she's what brought her into pain and what healed her of pain? She said, I caught him doing wrong. I caught him on the web. I caught him on the telephone. I caught him. I caught him. I caught him. So when she caught him doing all the negatives, all those negatives brought what? Hurts, hatred and bitterness. Now when she came back and the husband got into the word of God and spent more and more time in the word of God and renewed his mind. Now what, where did she go? What did she catch him? Catch him in good things. She caught him in doing the right thing. So, when you do the right things continuously, renewing your mind, even the person who has got hatred, that hatred will be gone and it will turn into love. Are you following? See, many times people will come and say, Hey brother, my marriage is in a crisis. Please pray, please pray, please pray. Okay, we pray. But the spouse always catches you doing the wrong thing. Will your marriage be healed? Prayer should give you the strength to renew your mind and be committed to God's word. Commitment is very, very important. And the more and more you are committed to God, now you are saying, I don't care about my emotions, I don't care about my mood, God has said it, I will do it. And those who make that decision, these are the people who now experience the grace of God. The grace of God gets activated or the power of God gets activated only when decision is made of commitment. Most of our Christian life is governed by our feelings 
And that's why you do not experience the power of God. Look at the sixth verse. Look at the sixth verse. Just put it up, brother. Knowing this, knowing this, the old man that we burn every year, huh? Yeah? She. What is that old man? Your old sinful nature that was corrupted in you. Okay? That nature was, is what? Is what? Crucified with him. So that, so that the, so that the body of sin might be destroyed. No, no, no. This body that God has given us is neither moral nor immoral. It is neutral. This body always takes command from the mind. So if the mind gives you command to operate in sin, then this body will obey the mind and be active in sin. But the same mind gives you a command to the body to walk in righteousness, then this body will walk in righteousness. Okay, now, he said that your old nature, your old sinful nature has been crucified with Christ. Let me give you an example. A beautiful girl makes a choice that God, I will live for you, I'll die for you, and she has a good relationship with Jesus. Fantastic relationship with Jesus. She goes to church every day, takes part in most of the things in the church, and she's really, really a wonderful person. As she goes every day to church, a youth sees her, she's very beautiful in the body, and he's attracted to her. So he says, I want to get her. Okay? So he now sees that she goes to church every evening for the fire o'clock mass. Where do you think this boy will be? Huh? Where? In the morning? What time? How come this answer you gave right? <laughs> this answer is right. How interesting that everybody got the answer right. Praise God. So he goes to church every evening at 5. Now question. Is he going because he loves Jesus or is he going only to get that girl? Okay. Now after four weeks he begins to understand every Saturday evening there is a choir practice. And this girl is in the choir. Now where do you think this boy will be? <laughs> Praise God. Excellent answer man. So he's in the choir. Again. Is he joined the choir because he wants to praise God? Or is he going over there because he wants to fulfill his lust? Lust, okay. Now, every Saturday as they are singing, <laughs> they become friends. After three weeks, he says, can I drop you home? And she says, no, thank you. Now she sees that this boy is sincerely coming to church. This boy is all the time in the choir singing praises of God. She says to herself, truly, this one is a man of God. I will be so happy. Why are you laughing, Brother Wilson? I will be so happy with him. Praise God. 
Praise God. So she goes and talks to the priest and says, Father, I found a nice person and I have decided to get married. Why are you looking? They look here no. <laughs> I've decided to get married to this person. And the father knows this boy. And the father says, Baby, this fellow, I know him in and out. Do you know why he's coming to church? Just for you. His personal life outside the church is very, very different. This boy is not meant for you. And the girl says, Father, you do not know my love. <laughs> my love is like an ocean. He will get into this heart and all his life he will be swimming inside this ocean, Father. He will never be able to come out. Now, this girl has got two choices. One, fulfill our desire. Two, listen to what the word of God, what the priest is saying, a message from God, and put to death that desire. Are you listening? Yes. Okay. If she puts to death that desire, is it going to be painful? Because two hearts together, an arrow going inside. <laughs> and now the arrow has to come back. And the hearts have to be separated. And so much of... Yeah, how you know? <laughs> See, the grandma knows everything. <laughs> grandma was in the and the youth, they don't know anything. The grandma knows. Praise God. Okay. Everything is separated. Is it going to be painful? Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Now, with our own choice, listening to what the man of God is saying, is she willing to nail those desires on the cross? One. Two. She decides, even if he's on the wrong side, might be he's drinking a little. Okay. But one thing is that even after drinking the whole water, at least he's walking straight. <laughs> he's not falling on the road. Yes, might be smoking two packets. But praise God, my love will stop it and all that. Hello. Okay. She decides to get married. In three years, she has three children. Okay. Well, we know it's not possible. <laughs> Okay, now she was so slim and beautiful. Now having three children. So the boy is looking at her. And he's looking outside. So he finds his wife no more attractive because he got married only for the body. So now he goes around and finds another girl who is beautiful and start staying with her. <coughs> okay. Now that the husband has left her and she got three children, okay, is she going to be in pain? Yes. Now which pain according to you would be greater? This pain of being crucified, her desire and waiting on God to fulfill the desire. Which one? In our everyday life, in our everyday life, we have to make choices. <coughs> and when you make choices, there are choices which you desire, but it's contradicting to God's word. And you say, I don't want to get crucified. I just want to go and fulfill that desire. The moment you make that decision to fulfill that desire, you have now given the power of sin to destroy your future. But if you make that decision, Lord, because your word says so, I'm committed to you. I, with my own choice, allow those things to go through my desires. And